It's Dead Ain't Rap Podcast. It's been a while since you've seen both of our handsome faces on here. And it's your boy Triborough. This is Reg. Scary. And we are talking today about the long-awaited Cypress Hill documentary that premiered on Showtime last week. And I've been anxiously awaiting this documentary because Cypress, Cypress Hill has always been one of my favorite hip-hop groups ever. I mean, uh, top five for me, in my opinion, all time. And, and you know, um, just my introduction to them with, with uh, you know, how I could just kill a man. It had like a boom bap sound to it. It was rugged. It was it was street. And not even knowing at that time that, that you know, these uh, this group was from the West Coast, from Southgate, California. And just... You know, just just copying that first album, that self-titled first album, '91, and it was, it was just so, um, it was mind blowing just to listen to like a dope hip hop group from the West Coast with a boom bap sound, and, and having their producer uh, DJ Muggs be from the East Coast, or, you know, in Queens. I didn't even know that until years later, and yeah. you know, hearing the Latin influence from Be Real with his nasal flow and Send Dog on the chorus and the ad-libbing and later on they they would bring in uh, uh the fourth member eric bobo <coughs> and um i didn't I, that's another i didn't know about about his pops being really bobo and i thought that was cool that they uh they they talked about each member's life story in this documentary but just from that that very first album 91 i was an instant fan and and seeing their video how i could just kill a man done in in uh in harlem ice cube is in the video and you know hand on the pump that, that was the second single from the album and that was a great uh track and i've been a fan from day one and i followed every album that they've done every side you know project side group everything mugs is doing right now with his his uh his individual you know projects with uh little ito and rome streets and rock marcy and you know He's just making, he's still making a uh, uh, dope, timeless uh, hip hop. And I'm glad that they finally uh, gave this group uh, uh, recognition and the proper respect that they deserve. They got Hollywood star on, um, uh, on the Walk of Fame. What was that, La- last year they did that? They got that? 2019. 2019, and that was dope to see. And uh, you had Exhibit there, and a lot of the West Coast um, um, you know, legends at that event. It was great to see that they showed footage of that in the um, documentary and um they've been phenomenal and um it was directed by Ron Ario. he was uh i believe he was a photographer and he was also a type of soul tour manager and i saw i saw another documentary on netflix called ellie originals where that was about mr cartoon the famous yeah. tattoo artist and he's tatted up eminem and 50 cent Met the man, and all of all of you know, celebrities, and, and um, him and Esteban was uh, Esteban was uh, was uh, you know, their, their best friends, and it was great to see Esteban again, uh, doing this documentary. <coughs> and um, just uh, it was great, it was great to see them talk about individually the, the members talk about their life growing up in um, California and how they got into hip hop and you know, be real was a gang member and, and you know he he was he was you know out in the streets and you know, he, he got shot and he managed to um after getting shot he managed to change his life around and, and um hip-hop really saved his life and you know you see uh they talked to talk with Sendog and his upbringing and the and mugs being from the queens and then after uh moving from queens to california <laughs> You know how he got into DJing and producing, and you know he said it, he said his influence was uh, Jam Master J, and you know, rest in peace of Jam Master J. You know Run DMC was one of my favorite rap groups growing up. You know again top five, top ten all time, and you know um, you know we we we, uh, we don't have legendary DJs like that anymore. So it was great to hear him, you know, uh, talk about you know Jam Master J and being his influence, and you know. Um, we had uh, Eric Bobo, you know, his, his father was Willie Bobo, the great uh, percussionist. <clears throat> and um, it was it was great to see, like, have them talk about their individual lives and upbringing. And um, it showed a lot of classic footage, a lot of footage of, like, when um, 
they were in the studio when they, uh, uh, the, they were talking with, with the group and when Muggs was playing the demo tracks of like um, real estate, it was like a different version. There's, there's a different version of um, how, um, how, how, how I could just kill a man. You were yeah. playing those. I would love to hear like the, the their early demos of of some of those songs, you know, and um, you know they they talked they uh showed a lot of classic footage of them like uh, uh in early stages of the group and working on the demos and then when they finally got the record deal with Rough House, um Columbia Records, you know, and that Rough House the group out the um record label out of Philly with uh I forgot what's the name of uh, Phil Phil and Joe, yeah. Yeah, and they they had a lot of artists on their label, Criss Cross, the Fugees. Nah, I forgot Nas was originally signed to them, and then he mm-hmm. went to Columbia. And I think he was just signed for the halftime joint, right? Yeah, because um, Columbia owned Rough House too. Right, right. So it was like a, a subdivision of Columbia. Yeah, right? and they had a lot of big name artists on that label, and, and as well as Cypress Hill, and um. That was it was that was good to see them both in the um, documentary talking about you know Sonic Cypher Soul and um they showed a lot of tour footage, a lot of concert footage. Um <coughs> es- Estevan, <coughs> excuse me, Estevan had uh like all the tour laminate um backstage passes for each tour, you know, in his in uh, and that was that was crazy to see. It was like so many tours they've been on Lollapalooza and Woodstock ninety nine and I remember that Woodstock um 99 show that was great you know um i remember seeing that on on tv on mtv actually showed that they showed like different performances from different bands and artists um i wish i, I wish i could have went to the, one of those because they, they look like fun and um they've been all around the world they went all over you know egypt and uh, australia amsterdam they showed footage when, when they were in amsterdam you know and at the you know the weed is legal there, so it was, you know it was, they were having a ball out there, and you know um, they talked about uh, you know when Send Dog had left the group, and I totally forgot that he left the group. I don't, I don't. I, he left the group like right after Temples of Boom came out, and yeah. I totally forgot he had left the group because it seemed like be, between Temples of Boom and the Four album, they didn't miss a step because he came back for the Four album. And and this is before we had the internet, so we didn't hear nothing about Send Dog um, even leaving the group. I don't I don't even remember that. And um, you know, he went off and he he wanted to get away from the tour, the tour life and you know, clear his head and you know, get right and you know, he had he put out his own group. I I know I, I know he had his own rock group. I remember seeing them online a couple of years ago. <clears throat> he had his own like little spin off group or whatever, doing his side project and it was just up to uh you know, um, be real and mugs and you know Eric Bobo to um, you know remain on tour and, and you know continue to do shows for the fans and all that and you know I thought that was good and, and um, you know um, it was it was it was definitely I, lo- I love watching the, the old footage like the old footage of them you know they talked about being banned at Saturday Night Live I know we talked about that in the past the Saturday Night Live incident and and they told they kept warning mugs not to not to smoke or don't don't light up at, at you know at the on, at the show and he did it anyway he said fuck it fuck y'all and he and end up lighting the joint on stage and they got yeah. banned for life from off of there um, yeah they they also got banned from Arsenio for the same shit too really so they did that at Arsenio yeah because the story with that was um mm-hmm. the Beastie Boys performed so what you want and I, I think in proxy the Beastie Boys got banned too. Mm-hmm. Then they um played the So What You Want remix for Cypress right. Hill. I want to say um it was Send Up or Mugs that later joined, and the Arsenio or somebody that banned them and stuff like that too. So uh, I didn't know that. See, they they didn't mention that in the documentary. Yeah, a lot of shit they didn't they didn't mention, which we'll get into that. Yeah. We'll get that was crazy, and and you know um. Yeah, I, I I do remember seeing that Saturday Night Live, Saturday Night Live performance because there's some that I remember over the years, there's some that I don't remember. I remember the Cyber Soul, um, uh, performance. I remember the when when Tupac got had first got out, you know, when he was on death on uh, death row, and um, I think Madonna was waiting backstage for him. I remember him performing Snoop Dogg in '93, of course, when he, when Doggy Style first came out. I remember that. So some of them I remember, some of them I don't remember, but I do remember when when Cyber Soul was there for the like. The Black Sunday um era, 
when that second album dropped and um you know that was that was a great uh performance that night and um you know i i wish they had they would have went more in depth in you know in regards to like doing different albums like you know yeah. recording the black sunday album and recording temples of boom and you know what i'm saying um they have so many albums that it's like just those would have been great but they they did touch on you know different parts um of, of those albums like when uh when the four album came out and b real talked about his alter ego dr green thumb and and how that became like a, like its own thing and it had its own cult following and fan base and he he dressed up as shows as dr green thumb for the fans he dressed up as a cop <laughs> on, on one of yeah. the tours and um word. you know they, <clears throat> they they talk with the alchemist who was like the protege of mugs and alchemist is like one of the best producers ever in my opinion he's he's still killing it now him and mugs and you know even in this era and you know uh, i was surprised to see a lot of alchemists in this in this uh documentary i didn't think i would see that much i thought maybe one or two clips but he was in a lot of um uh scenes you know and um they showed uh, like early footage of him when he was young and he was like helping with the stage prop so for like the balloon that that skeleton balloon that they uh that they had to blow up and put on stage and he was uh helping with that and and you know alchemist has come a long way from doing that to becoming one of the best producers in hip-hop um in, in this era so you know that's it was cool to see him in it and and um you know uh they they talked about a lot of stuff you know the, of course of course the weed culture and and how you know people I, and even myself in the past i've said that you know cyber so they don't really say much though. all they talk about is is you know smoking weed but you know everybody got their lane you know and i felt like they, they're much more than just a group that just you know raps about smoking weed you know what i'm saying and and you know um it, it was it was a lot of you know the the weed culture and b hill he's uh he's like he's cultivating his own weed and all that and he showed him like like i was he's growing his own sh uh, strand and all that and i was cool to see and you know he has his own other endeavors with uh the the uh the dr green thumb podcast which he they didn't even uh talk about the he has his own podcast on youtube the dr green thumb uh podcast um he has another podcast called high and hungry I be, somebody told me that this host of that is actually his, his his uh his son i don't know how true it is that his son is hosting the high and hungry podcast is like a podcast where they like you know go to like different e eateries and restaurants or like you know for the for the weed smokers when they get hungry and that's been a great podcast that i've watched it you know, for the last three four years um you know so they got other things going on you know mugs had his own thing going on and um you know uh i, I thought it was a, a great uh documentary for you know a group that should have that, that's it but it's about time that they got their props it's been a long time coming and i'm glad that they did it now and not wait till you know one of them you know uh uh pass away to um to do it and i, I do feel they did miss on a lot of things though i i was so i, I thought like being that cypress like the like this rock fan base and they did touch on that when they talked about like doing on um, the rock superstar rap superstar drink that from skull and bones that whole double album thing where one half was like a rap um disc and then the second half was like a rock disc they had a a, a rock fan base you know being on tours like Lollapalooza and and you know smoking grooves and and you know um you know uh tours like that you know they were on um the same type of um uh, festivals like green day and nirvana and i i thought i would have seen like more rock star interviews like more interviews from like different you know um uh you know um rock artists you know like a dave roll or a flea from red hot chili peppers you know what i'm saying or dave navarro i didn't i didn't see that you know what i'm saying i and I, I i was expecting to see those type of interviews we didn't get no interviews from the soul assassins crew like they mentioned yeah. house of pain but we didn't we didn't see everlast in there we didn't see no funk dubious that was also one of their groups we didn't see psycho realm you know what i'm saying i was like i was surprised i'm like because you know and, and they didn't really touch on I would have loved to see like a whole segment for mugs where he touched you know touched on yes. like the whole cultivation of the record label for soul assassins and the crew and the many um 
um, projects he's done under that label, and we didn't get. That. I didn't see Mayhem Loren in that. You know, as many albums as he's done with Mayhem Loren, I didn't see him in, in, in the in the um, documentary or you know uh, an artist like Little Edo or Rock Mars. He had, I was expecting to see them them dudes in it. You know what I'm saying? And um, for whatever reason, we didn't get that. I was I was surprised about that, especially the House of Pain. I thought House of Pain was sure would have been in it because Jump Around was really Cypress Hill record, if I'm not mistaken. And and they so you know supposedly like they gave the, the record to House of Pain or whatever. Yeah, so so to that regard, yeah. Yeah, so I was I was surprised that I didn't see that. That I, everything else was 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 good, but I, I was surprised I didn't I didn't see that. You know, like the more involvement from um the Soul Assassins, you know, offspring artists or whatever. But I I thought it was a great um documentary. I thought it was definitely one of the best, and it's always great to have a, a documentary, you know, um you know, for our, for our culture and, and especially like on a, a big time network like Showtime. So, you know, so salute to Nas and Massacre. We're definitely um killing it right now with these documentaries. So what did you think about the documentary? Um yeah, I'm I'm gonna <coughs> probably share most of my sentiments with you. Mm-hmm. And that the documentary was a pretty good documentary. It was just like there was just a lot of crucial things missing. Yeah and whatnot too, you know what I'm saying? Um First of all, let's talk about it. Now. It was all first of all, it's always nice to see Cypress Hill get recognized. Yeah, I've always been one of my favorite hip hop groups. Um, I remember when I first heard How Can I Just Kill a Man, I was instantly a fan, Definitely. you know what I'm saying? Um, that first Cypress Hill album to this day is still hard hitting, and and and, th- and that's the thing too. Cypress Hill, yes, they did talk about weed, but some yeah. of the first album has some of their political shit, like pigs. They were talking police brutality and shit mm-hmm. like that too. Right. Um <coughs> yeah, man. Um, it's crazy. And don't get me wrong, I, I like um Black Sunday. I mm-hmm. like the album, but yeah, compared to like other people in the fan base, I'm not in love with it as much yeah. as the self-titled and Temples of Boom and whatnot. Right. And <laughs> because speaking of Temples of I mean, what's that Black Sunday? Mm-hmm. I was surprised because originally Insane in the Brain was originally a diss track. Oh, I didn't know that. For who? Well, I'm working on the episode right now, but oh. there's like a lot of different stories. Mm. One of the main known stories was with um Chuck Rock, because mm. this former I looked up. Yeah. Um, she had the album called that 92 album. Mm. Um so Oh, I gotta get mine, yo. Yeah, I gotta get mine, yeah. yo. They said that he was making fun of the style, he had a this track against them mm. or is making fun of the but like i said i'm doing a whole episode and that's kind of the reason why i watched the documentary because i thought it was going to have some shit about insane in the brain but right it, and a lot of people said they would, might also been talking about kid frost too because i think kid frost mm. in an interview but like i said i'm wow. don't hold me on that no i i thought they were they were friends with kid frost right wasn't that like they they influenced like in hip-hop I'm gonna I'm gonna reread that interview. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna let you know because I don't want to yeah. say too much and shit. I know I know they mentioned Mellow Man Ace. I know Mellow Man Ace was like, isn't that? I think that's Send Dogs Father or something. Yeah. Some okay. Show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. And it's like, um, I personally felt like they were talking about the music, mm-hmm. but then once they got into like the Black Sunday, that's when they started more talking about the impact. And don't get me wrong, I don't mind that, but it's like when I'm watching like these hip hop documentaries or just documentaries about music in general, I like to see the making of certain songs, production yeah. styles too. Uh-huh. And regarding like DJ Muggs, and this is something that really just hit me too. <coughs> yeah. Muggs brought a lot of international flavor to hip hop. Like, uh-huh. I agree. Especially the fact that they didn't really talk that much about House of Pain. You gotta remember that this between 91 and 92, this nigga adapted to Latin and Irish styles instead of mm-hmm. hip hop too. Right. You know what I'm saying? I wish they would have talked more about that part, mm-hmm. you know. Right. Um I was surprised, yet not surprised they didn't talk about the beef with Ice Cube like that. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, because it's like, don't get me wrong, I know that they're cool mm-hmm. now, and I right. they cool now and shit like that, but Again, it was like crucial stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that really almost um that got them like a lot of trouble with like that, that brought them like um trouble with especially with the LA gangs, especially like right. against the Hispanics and stuff like that too. 
Right. Um, I was surprised they didn't talk about like the Soul Assassin stuff too. <coughs> yeah. Like, so much crucial stuff about Cyber they didn't really talk about or dive into like that. Right. But actually, I, I feel I feel like it was more like a celebration. Yeah. Of their legacy. Right. And I'm I'm, I'm cool with that, but this is like the really like the first Cypher Soul documentary that mm-hmm. I've seen and shit too. And yeah, I just really wanted to like know more like their like relations, with, especially with the alter, the alternative rock crowd and stuff like that too. Right. Being like the first members of the first hip hop group to actually get a rock in Hollywood Hall of Fame. And I, I always thought it was like even run DMC or somebody like that, you know what I'm saying? Right. Cause you would think like it would probably be like one DMC or Wu Tang, but it's like Cypress Hill, and it's like mm. people forget their impact in hip hop. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just felt like it was a good documentary, but I felt like it could have done a bit better with like the historical, the chronologically right. events and stuff like that too. Like, you know what like and like what you said, like, <laughs> like what was the relationship like? Cause they brought this up in the documentary that I didn't and I didn't know this too. Eric Bobo was was down with the Beastie Boys. He was part of their band. Yeah, he and was. they stole him from the Beastie Boys, and that's what I, w- I, I would want to know. Like, how was their relationship with with Beastie Boys now? After they cool, you know, are they cool? Yeah, they they've always, whenever look, they've always been cool with one another. Right. How did the Beastie Boys take that when when they found out Eric was leaving their band for Psycho? See, see, I wish that we would have known about that part. Right. I, I wish they, like they so could have had questions. had them in there. You know, like like talk about that. You know, Ad, Ad Rock talk about you know. Why, um, you know, uh, uh, how did you all feel when Eric came on and said, like, yo, I'm leaving the band to go with uh, Cypress So Because it was, like, on the same day, I think, at, at Lollapalooza that he left. Yeah. Like, he was supposed to perform with the Beastie Boys, and then he, he ended up performing with Cypress So So I would have liked to know that, because I didn't know that at all. You know? And and they had Cheech and Chong also. The, uh, yeah. Family, they were also in the documentary talking about, you know, Cypress So and the weed culture and all that. I didn't know be real Rob Cheech, Cheech and John. That was crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> you know. And um, yeah, I just I just felt like uh they should have touched up touched on those on those things. I, I totally forgot about the ice cube beef or whatever. You know, it would have been nice to see to see Cube and that like, you know. How 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 did you, you know like how you know um how how did he uh start working with mugs? You know, mugs worked on the predator album. Yeah. So I would have loved to hear like you know the, the the recording sessions for the Predator album with him and Mugs. That would have been crazy. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I, I thought it was a, a a good documentary. Definitely, I suggest people watch this. You know, if you don't know about Cypress Hill and their backstory and their music, definitely watch this documentary. Then go check out all the albums from the first one in '91 to uh, even the the new one that came out with uh, with Black Milk, Back in Black. That's a, a dope album. You know, it's a different sound for Cypress, but the Black Milk definitely kept it within the Cypress Hill um, um, realm, so I think that's a dope album. And you know, this is this has been dope. Definitely uh, salute the Nas again, and, and you know, coming out with the dope hip hop documentaries for our culture. Because if if we don't tell our own story, who gonna tell it for us? CNN, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we it's definitely dope to to see Showtime stepping up and and. You know, putting these documentaries on a, on a grand scale, like they did with the Wu Tang documentary, and they did with the Video Music Box documentary, and now this one. And then Friday, I just found out that we got Bushwick Bill got his own documentary coming on on Showtime, so that's going to be dope to watch. And I'm looking forward to that too, because I don't know uh, a lot about the Ghetto Boys, so I'm looking definitely looking forward to um seeing that documentary. Right, that's that's going to be very interesting. Definitely, you know, long overdue for them too. So. Right, you know, definitely. But this was this was dope. Um, the documentary once again is called Cypress Hill and Saint in the Brain, directed by Estevan uh, Oreo, and it's currently on Showtime streaming on Fire Stick. So definitely check it out. This was fun. We got to do like a Cypress Hill like discography breakdown or something. I'm down. I'm I've been down. wanting to do that because I'm like yo, like I I don't have I got their first three albums. But I definitely want to get the other albums, and I do got the greatest hits also. But um, I definitely want to want to do more uh, Cypress Hill discussions, though. Yeah, I was just listening to the four album the other day. Yeah. I recently got that album mm-hmm. and stuff. That was pretty dope. Definitely, man. That's underrated, yeah. underrated album, man. And 
I feel like after they first three, like, like, I don't want to say the fan base went down. It's just like, I, I maybe the album sales went down, but they were still making dope hip hop. They were still relevant. And, and they were experimenting <laughs> with like different styles too. Cause we got to remember Skull and Bones had that rap and rock. Yes. They were experimenting with rock and stuff mm. like that too. So. And that, that's another thing. Like they, they had Fred Dust in there. I don't remember Cypress Hill ever working with Limp Bizkit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, when the hell did Cypress Hill they do anything with Limp? Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. yeah. I'm like, you know, and I, I I got the Limp Biscuit remix album. I listened to a lot of Limp Biscuit. I'm like, I don't remember Mugs, man, unless he did a remix of them that I don't know about. I, I don't remember Cypress and Limp doing anything together. So that was weird to even see him in there, you know? But again, it was like like seeing Fred Durst in there coming from a rock band like Limp Biscuit. I would like to see, I would have liked to see more um, rock artists in the documentary talking about you know them getting into Cypress Hill and, and their relationships with, with the group on tour and all that and unfortunately we didn't get that but um you know maybe who knows maybe they'll make a mugs documentary for it because you know he's a legendary producer you know what I could definitely see that happening right and, and um it was it was dope but definitely enjoy it and um yeah Cypress Hill is a Hall of Famer they they definitely need to be in the Rock and Hall of Fame it's long overdue it's been 30 years now you know uh in, induct these cats you know, for what they did for um uh, Latin uh, hip hop and culture is, is definitely they definitely need to be saluted. So, you know, salute to Cypress Hill and the whole Soul Assassins crew. Definitely. Yeah. This was dope, man. And we'll be definitely enjoyed talking about this, and we're definitely gonna be back with some more dope shit on here. I know I've been I've been I've been slacking on on this channel. I, I I'm back to being back to to you know myself and uh coming out with some some more uh dope um conversations for people to all uh be a part of and you know stay tuned for more because we got some more shit coming definitely all right bro definitely <laughs> stick on that can't wait yes, no doubt all right <laughs>